Sorry, Lena. It's against the law. Is that the law? Oh, yeah, no, no. Come on, 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 why do you go on drinking all the time? Does he spend all his time drinking? Oh, no. Part of the time, I think, he runs around with women. Jiggle. Were you sober when you struck your wife? Yes, Your Honor. Sober as a judge. Ninety. On second thought, I think I'll turn you over to your wife. <coughs> Case dismissed. Hello, Mac. Hello, Judge. Sit down. Thank you. They find something interesting here tonight. Hold so. Take cakes. Well, I found this kid in the hallway on my feet. What is the boy or girl? Oh, I don't know. Why don't you find these things out? Take it to cover its feet up. Take it to the city nursing home. Cops don't seem to They don't study. They don't watch the business. Now, Mac, if you're looking for a copy, there's a great character for one of your novels. Which one? That one, Madame Galena Forsyth. Yeah. She's to be a famous Shakespearean actress. Exquisite Julia. There's a sit in the gallery and watch it. I was crazy about it. It was before your time. <coughs> Ex case, Madame Galena Forsyth. You're quite a stranger. I haven't seen you in nearly three days. What is it this time? <laughs> this minion of the law has a grudge against me. Oh, I told you last time. You see, Judge, it was this way. I was shocking to find a few little trinkets sent to me in England and quite by accident. You found yourself walking out with something you forgot to pay for. I know, Lena. True. What? Ceremony in? Nothing else, Lena. Only 15 days. The quality of mercy is not strange. It brought us as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. Lead on. It is mightier in the mightier. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. Any 
a stirrups like that and I'll clear the courtroom. Take that five days. Or two days. Go on, beat it. Get out. Go home, will you please? Next page. The page of the Quell'imbrogliona, quella ladra, quella fiaccona è venuta alle mie ristoranti, ha mangiato e bevuto con una porca e non ha avuto pagare niente. Quella là, quella là, quella là. Oh, it's a lie. What did he say? I don't know, but it's a lie. Do you know anything about this case? Yes, Your Honor. She had a full meal in this man's restaurant and didn't pay for it. I offered to pay. I offered to wash the dishes for him. No, 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 George. You know, I got to the automatic if you watch. No, no, go. I'm washing the dish. Hey! How'd I know he had an automatic dishwasher? He's cheating anyway, Yana. Charging a dollar and a quarter for a table joint. It ain't worth it because the spaghetti was lousy. My spaghetti lousy? My spaghetti? Caruso, the great Italian tenor, every night after the opera come over to my restaurant and eat my spaghetti. My spaghetti. Yeah, no wonder he died. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, excuse me, George. I never knew an Italian restaurant yet that wasn't Caruso's favorite. George, I got a nice restaurant. Not a nice of the wine and a fine of the wheat. <laughs> you just go there, Yana. Eat one of them table joys and see if he ain't cheating. Are you inviting me out to dinner? <coughs> Young lady, uh, are you in the habit of going in restaurants, ordering dinner and walking out without paying? No. No. Why did you do it? I ain't eaten for two days. I seen a menu on the window and got to reading it. First thing I knew, I was inside ordering food. Don't you work? I did till two months ago. I was out with a show. We folded up in Lancaster, PA. PA short for Pennsylvania. Then I was took sick and went to the hospital. Since then, I've been walking my feet off trying to get a job, but seems to be a lot of other people doing the same thing. You ever done this before? Yes. You got away with it? Yes. Ever been in jail? Yes. What charge? No charge. I was born in jail. Ten days in the White House. Please don't send me to jail, Your Honor. That's what they always said to me. Once born in jail, you die in jail. But I swore to myself I'd never let that happen to me. I'm all alone. I ain't got nobody. And it's hard sometimes. But I promise I'll never do it again. I'll starve first. Please don't send me to jail, Your Honor. Please. Look here. What's to become of her? She's no money, no home. That's life, Mac. Not your fiction, where everybody lives happily ever afterwards. See, I'd like to do something for her. All right. Suspended sentence. Uh, see here. I'll pay for that uh, dinner. I'm sorry I bring you over here. But business is business. It's not for the money. It's the way what you say about my spaghetti. Oh, that's all right. This money wasn't so bad. Thank you, you very are. much. Thank you. Goodbye, George. Goodbye. Well, are you coming with me? Thanks, Kate. Stand up when you're in this court. Oh. What's the charge? This man is trying to put a dynamo on the bum over here in one of these electric plants. Caught him at it. Caught him in here. Are you afraid of me? Hey, what's your racket anyway? Where are you taking me? I'm taking you to my home in the country. No, you don't take me to no home in no country. No. What have you got against the country? Plenty. That's where they have them orgies and seduction scenes. They give a girl champagne and club sandwiches, and then they take her all. 
Next thing you know, you'll find a body out one of them empty lots. Pardon me. Where do you get your ideas? I seen the talkies. Oh, I thought so. Well, to show you how wrong you are, I'm taking you home to see my mother. Oh, yeah? I'm onto that mother gag, too. I'm gonna get out of here. No, 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 wait a minute now. Now, you're perfectly free to go if you like, but let me explain something to you. You see, I'm an author. I write books. Now, the heroine of my new novel is going to be a waif. A what? A waif. An urchin. A rose in the gutter. Rose in the gutter. Not bad. How do you like that? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You see, while I'm creating my new character, I want you around me to study you. Now, in return for this privilege, I'm perfectly willing to give you a good home, good food, good clothes, and a liberal stipend for your time and your trouble. Now, what do you say? It sounds screwy to me. Screwy? Screwy. Oh. Tell him we're waiting up for him. Yes, ma'am. Did you enjoy the opera, Your Reverence? Well, Timson, it rested me. Yes, the opera always does. But I do not approve of that for others. No, no, it, it stimulates the emotions without satisfying them. Uh, may very words, Your Reverence. <laughs> Bishop's a dear. But I do wish he wouldn't treat Timson as a social equal. He's free enough as it is. Then why do you keep him, Mrs. Forrester? Oh, he was faithful to my husband before he died. Ah? Still waiting for the wandering novelist. I wish your son would make up his mind, Mary. He is wearing these two girls out with anxiety and suspense. <laughs> Personally, I have no doubt as to the outcome. I'm waiting up not for Matt, but simply to annoy Angela. Darling. <laughs> well, may the best girl win. Thank you. I intend to. Mary, may I have my usual glass of milk? And perhaps a spot of brandy. You see, I am preaching tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Poisonous old witch. I get it. Where you live? When I'm in the country, I do, yes. See, this is a swell jump, uh, dump establishment. Thank you. Too bad it ain't in the city, huh? See, real fireplace and everything. Sit down on the couch, you'll find it very comfortable. Excuse me. It's very all damp, but I guess it won't run. Are you still afraid of me? Uh-huh. Why? Oh, because being knocked around the way I have, I found out nobody don't give you a nothing for nothing. <laughs> Are you hungry? Oh, well, I'm hungry all the time. Well, I'll see that you get some sandwiches immediately. Hey, make mine a hamburger with onions. Well, I'm afraid we're all out of hamburger at the moment. Uh, would chicken do? Chicken? Are you kidding? Come on, put some ketchup on my hamburger for me. Please, it's your bottom. <laughs> I was running down the hall when I heard the bell ring, sir, and I tripped over the road. That'll do, Timpson. Sir, take care of those. Sir. And Timpson, yes. I want you to make some chicken sandwiches. Yes. And some coffee. Yes, sir. And Timpson, yes, sir. make the sandwiches thick. Thick? Thick? Tick, there'd be, sir. Tick. Can you beat that? I thought he was your old man. And here he's only a waiter. 
No, he's my butler. Oh, I've seen guys like that in the movies, but I always thought they were kidding. I understand that you have no family. Well, there's a woman down near Delancey Street who says she's me aunt. But when it gets sick and went to the hospital and come out and had no wages and no job, she says she wasn't me aunt no more. Now I ain't got nobody. That's why I'm so glad you're going to put me in your book and give me a job. <laughs> Here they are, sir. Take your tin. Well, <laughs> no, no. There we are. Thank you. Around these corners, it's just like pushing the back. Abby, You may go. Yes, sir. Graham, Curly. It's not customary to address servants unless you're giving them orders. Okay, Chief. Hey, which one of the sandwiches can I have? <laughs> well, I would suggest that you start at the top and work your way down. Now, oh, you have plenty to eat? Mm-hmm. And you're not afraid? Mm -mm. Then if you'll excuse me a moment? Mm-hmm. Uh, hello? Thank you. <coughs> Your mother is home. Thank you very much. Boy. Hello, Mother. Hello. How are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, Max. Where have you been all this time? I went to the night court. I wanted to get some copy. I think I got some very good stuff. That is, I think I did. Judge was an old friend of mine. Known him for years. Name is, uh, begins with, uh, O something. Can't think of it at the moment. I'll have a bit of brandy. Let me, Max, dear. Hi, Jimmy Moore. Miss Boy, Miss Boy. Hi, Miss Boy. Oh, too long, Timmy. Listen, don't oh, Timmy. Come on. Uh, I'll be a good boy. Yeah, I'm a good boy, Timmy. Come on now. Boy. Timmy, don't yes. make so much noise. Your mother's there. Don't make so much noise. I'll go get one drink, and then I'll go... I'll stay. bring the drink to you upstairs. Oh, you? yes, which you said last night. And please. I didn't get it. You know, I think you do. Please, boy, please. Do All right, Tim. All right, Tim. That's the book. Now, I'll make it. Here, you keep out of it. Leave them to me so I can take care of them. Just yes, so I know all about that. Now, you've been carried up those stairs for the last time. Either you go up those stairs by yourself or you stay where you are for the rest of the night. Come on, get up from there. Please, sir, please. You keep out of it. You're in no condition to associate with decent people or be in a decent house. Get up from there. Oh, what are you picking on him for? Who is he anyway? He's my son. Your son? And you're leaving him way there? Say, what kind of a mother are you? Can't you see the kid's stiff? Come on, Curly. Shake a leg and help me get the kid upstairs. Uh, hold up, will you? Like Millen. Uh, <coughs> I'll explain later. <coughs> Good morning, Simpson. Good morning, Your Reverend. Good morning. Lovely morning, isn't it? Lovely, Your Reverend. Lovely. As it should be on a Sunday morning. As it should be, sir. <laughs> now, Simpson, I would like to have just uh, a little buttered toast. A little buttered toast. Take your tin. Tin. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I think so, Your Reverend. What is it? It's what Mr. Mack brought home last night, Your Reverend. Oh, I see. Pretty.
Hello. <laughs> You're up rather early. Couldn't sleep. Really? Won't you have a little orange juice? No, thanks. I already had me breakfast. Oh. Ham, eggs, potatoes, beans, porridge. Well, that ought to sustain you at least for lunch. <laughs> now, why couldn't you sleep last night? On account of the quiet. I was up all night listening to it. Oh, Timson. Yes? Provide some noise in the future. I'll throw rocks in her window all night. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, miss. I'm very glad to know that you are here. And I hope for all our sakes that you like it. Oh, don't go away. I like to talk to you. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't. Gonna work? Mm-hmm. Okay? Indeed, yes. yes. Well, <laughs> goodbye, my child. Bye, Dick. Bye. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, Your Reverend, I hope you have a nice day. Thank you. I hope you have a full house. Thank you. You know, miss, he's a bishop. I don't care what he is. I like him anyway. He's a swell guy. So long. Curly, when's Mr. Mac coming down? Usually on Sundays about 11. 11? Oh, what am I going to do to kill time so long? Have you ever read one of Mr. Forrester's books? No. I think you better. He wants everyone to get familiar with his works. Now, this one. How old are you? Seventeen. I'll be next. Eighteen the next boy's day. Oh. I think you better go fishing. Oh, I don't like to do that. I'll feed the turkeys. The turkeys? You mean the ducks? <laughs> Thing for your father back in the Wyoming days after one of his visitors. Yeah, but he could snap out of it and accomplish something. Uh, fine, upstanding man he was that. He was the strongest man in the world. In fact, he was nearly as strong as my own father. I guess I'm not much like a man, I tell you. Ah, uh, you're the spitting image of him. Except that he was, had a buffalo tattooed on his chest, horns and all. He was that manly. And you were his favorite son, the same as, as... As Mac is mother's. Yeah, I know. You might as well give it to me, too. I get it all the time. Oh! oh! There you are. I, I suppose that's good for a headache. Well, 
It didn't do you for a fight, anyhow. I'll take that. You can have it. You might want any part of it. Mother? Mother? Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Miss Keaton. Mother, I'm, I'm sorry for last night. It's very simple for you to apologize. Oh, the truth is, I'm a misfit here in this house. I'm in the way. I feel it. I don't think I blame you. I don't blame anyone except myself. Oh, Mother, if you could just see your way clear to letting me go out to the ranch Dad gave me, why... I'm sorry, but I don't trust you. It isn't that. It's just you want to sell the ranch and buy Mac a yacht. I heard you tell him so the other night. I heard you tell him she had a perfect right to sell her if you needed the money, and that I was irresponsible. Oh, Mother, I don't want to quarrel. I'm sick of it. But if you'd just trust me just this once, I, I can... I have make... trusted you, and that trust has only cost me pain and humiliation. It was the same thing with your father. He could never understand. Maybe it was you and Mac that didn't understand. Oh, I know you think I'm partial to your brother. But it's not partiality. It's pride. Pride in his achievements. He has given dignity and honor to the name of Forrester. But you have only disgraced it. You're your father's son. Yes, I am. I love Dad, and I'm proud to be his son. The idea of your behaving as you did last night it was most embarrassing to me. In front of those two charming girls. And the bishop of all people. Oh, Mother, I, I told you I would... I will you another word. Oh, well, Mother, now, don't be an... You know, she's a very amusing little person. Yeah. When I told her that I was taking her to my place in the country, she almost jumped out of the car. Yeah. Uh, she thought that I was going to have my way with her. Hmm. Absolutely. And where is the poor little disappointed wait now? I have... Simpson. Yes, sir. Where, uh, where is the little lady? You took one of your books and went out to read it, sir. Indeed. Well, hmm. Uh, which one, Tim? The one of the red cover, sir. What was it about? <laughs> uh, you have to excuse me, miss. Remember the one about the woman that went to the artist's studio and he wanted to paint her with her clothes off? And she left her child out in the ditch with the medal around her neck and the child commenced to cry and all that. That will do, Timson. Yes, sir. The rest is virgin. That's it. Would you like to see her? The rest is virgin? No, 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 the little girl. A very, very interesting type. Born in the gutter. Knows all about life. I feel very, very happy to think that she'd be interested in reading one of my books. She will probably discover a very subtle meaning if it only... Well... My public. <laughs> Take it from me, kid. It ain't worth it. I don't know what it is, but nothing's worth playing about. Gee, I used to pull in my ad every time they played a box of flowers in a movie house. Now, you couldn't get me to quietly foreclose the mortgage on the old lady and send it to the poor house. Oh, that's ridiculous. And I'm ashamed of myself. What for? Sure, you got feelings. Yeah, I've got too many. Crying because you got drunk last night? Only partly. What else? Because I'm no good. Ah. Uh, I wouldn't say that about myself. First place, I wouldn't believe it. And if I did believe it, I wouldn't admit it. You don't have to admit it. Everybody knows it. I don't. I think you're okay. You do? Why? Oh, because you can cry. See, if you was no good, you'd think you was okay. You just ain't got onto yourself yet, that's all. But you will someday, and when you do, you'll click like a nickel in an automatic. Do you think so? Sure. Gee, ain't you got no ambition? What do you want to be, huh? Well, I'd like to run a ranch. Ranch? Yeah, you know, sort of a farm. 
out west with mountains and horses. My father was a rancher. Is that same as being a cowboy? Well, practically. See, my father was a wonderful man. But you know, I don't belong in a place like this. Boy, I like the great open spaces. Oh. Oh, yeah, I know. Where men are men. Oh, you see. Well, why don't you go there? Because I haven't got the car fare. Hitchhike. Hitchhike? Yeah, steal a hitch till they dump you off and then hike till you can get another hitch. Hitchhike. Yeah, that's a great idea. You got some rules, Steve. But I haven't got a ranch. Well, work on somebody else's. I hadn't thought of that. If you got your health and believe in yourself, nobody can lick you. The only thing that can lick you is... Is what? That stuff that licked you last night. I was thinking when I put you to bed. Was that you? Oh, that's all right, but I was thinking, what a shame, a small kid like you taking account just on account of a bottle of bootleg booze. Well, it'll never happen again. Can I count on that, pal? My word, partner. <laughs> See, who are you, anyway? I'm the heroine. You're the what? Honest. I'm the girl the hero's going to fall in love with in your brother's next book. See, that brother of mine isn't so dumb after all. <laughs> you know, before I talked to you, I felt terrible. Say, I'm hungry. Have you had breakfast yet? Yeah, but I could eat another one. And I thought your hero is the most perfect man I ever met. How wonderful to write a lot as you write a lot. Can it be that a man so wise as you really ex 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 exist? Exist? Best up, dear Mr. Forrester. Aren't you really the hero of your own novel? Lovely letter. <laughs> he thinks you're the rest of voice. And Get on with the letter. Would it be possible for you to pause a moment in your busy and, and brilliant... Brilliant, perhaps? Yeah, brilliant. Like to send a word of hope to... Your adoring worshiper, Minnie Go Vogel. Lovely. Well, send Minnie one of my photographs. And don't forget to autograph it. I did already. Uh, with the stand. Gee, Minnie's certainly carrying a torch to you. A what? Torch. That's when you got to the end for a guy you can't see straight. <laughs> well, that's very good. I'll put that down and remember it. I'll use it for my new book. But then, all the girls feel that way about James, Angela, for instance. Me, for instance. Really? Say, Mac. What? What do you think about me? I think you are very delightful. And fresh. I ain't stylish like Jane and Angela. Fortunately. Well, they're very conventional. Even in an adaptive uh, Conventional. Uh, you know, you... You're different. Oh, I'm great. I'd rather please you than anybody in the whole world, man. You do. You've been a great help to me. Say, Matt. What? I want you to know something. What? You know, I wise crack around and all that, but I want you to know there ain't a night I go to sleep without thinking of you, of all you've done for me, how you kept me here for three months and bought me these swell clothes and took me out of the night court and everything. Oh, I see. Then it's gratitude that you feel, not love. No, both. I think you're the most wonderful man in the whole world. Do you really? Well, that's lovely. Tell me more what you think of me. Oh, I can't. Why? I get embarrassed. Why? I tell you, could you put it in one of your novels? Perhaps. Well, if it's for that, I won't tell you. Why not? I don't want the whole world to know I love you. 
I want to keep that to myself. But no one will know. Would you give me a kiss? Oh, no. Why not? I don't know. Well, you really can't love me. You'd be very glad to give me a kiss. Oh, it ain't that. It's because I... Because what? Because... I ain't never kissed a man in my life. Now, now, now. Honest. Oh, I've been kissed all right. A guy kissed me in a park once. And I let him have it. Right in the mud. <laughs> but don't you see? This is different. Isn't it? Yeah. But I made up my mind. I never kissed a man until I was engaged. That's a very commendable virtue. You have a very high sense of morality. I like that very much. Oh, I'm not. Precisely. And I felt so like working. I'll answer the telephone for you. I'm not into anyone. Not even to women. Okay, Pete. Hello. Who is it? Well, Mr. Forrest is not going to talk to any lady that won't give her name. Oh, Miss Jane. Well, you can't be disturbed. She's writing a novel today. Now, you're an artist yourself, Miss Jane. And then you know you wouldn't want to be disturbed if you was working. Is that so? Well, I'm coming right over to find out why I can't speak to Mac when I want to. You're an officious little imp, and I'm certainly going to speak to Mrs. Forrester about you. That'll be all, Cyril. You may go. you, Mac? No, I just think Mr. Mac is me. Oh, it's you, is it? I want to talk to Macmillan. Mr. Mac ain't into nobody. Not even to me? No, not even to you. But I insist on speaking to Macmillan. Well, you can insist your head off, but I ain't going to destroy them. Why, you dirty little... Frankly, Susan, I'm worried to death. I don't see me be. But Jane has failed to get Mac after throwing herself at him for three years. If he escapes that sophisticated little vampire, I don't think he'll have much trouble handling a primitive like the brat. But that's just the trouble. It's because she is so primitive, but this little outcast fascinates him. He's always quoting to me amusing things, she says. Like, a, oh, go chase yourself. What do you suggest we do? Instead of fighting with each other, you join forces against her. A lion against a common enemy. Exactly. Hmm? Why don't you do so? I can't. I've tried, but Mac always puts me off. Where is she? In the library. She sticks to him like a leech. Mrs. Forrester, may I handle this my own way? Oh, yes, my dear. Do everything you can. Poor brat. I suppose it has to be done, but I feel sorry for any girl who gets into Angela's clutches. <laughs> She doesn't have to kill the brat.
I don't pretend to be a saint. She's probably the sort that would expect you to marry her. Well, she'll be very disappointed. What do you intend to do with her? I intend to finish my book. Then she goes back where she came from. And very likely she'll be sent to the reform school. I feel no responsibility whatsoever. She was put in your charge, Mac. In a sense, you are responsible. I've done her no harm. On the contrary, I've been very good to her. For the past three months, she's had a very lovely home. Clothes. An opportunity of associating with respectable people. Surely, Bishop, you don't expect him to take care of the rest of her life. You're quite right, Mac. I don't approve of elevating people above their station. But, my dear Mary, once you do it, though, it does incur responsibility. I don't admit that. As soon as my book is finished, she goes. Will you excuse me? Well, young lady, what are you doing? Where are you going? I'm running away. Running away? Why? It's in that note, why? May I read that note? Dear Mr. Matt, I'm leaving your home forever. I'm awful sorry I lost my temper, but no lady would spend what that blonde dame said to me. I thank you for all you've done for me, and sorry I tore the swell suit you gave me all but the... Pants. Yes. Uh, from your adorable admirer, the brat. P.S. Don't send me a photograph. I have one autographed. Oh, yes, I see. Now, my dear, listen to me. I think you'd better go in and apologize to Mr. Mackin first. I ain't gonna. Now, 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 just do what I ask you to. No, I ain't gonna. Now, besides, you have his photograph without his permission. I don't care. Give him away anyhow. And I ain't gonna apologize. Now, 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 now. We'd better go into his study now and explain everything to him. Now, you come with me, young lady. Say, Mac, I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. How many times have I told you that when I'm busy, I don't want to be disturbed by anybody? Yeah, but it's important. Especially by you. But, Mac, it's important. It's about the brat. 
What about the brat? The bishop just told me that uh, you're going to kick her out. Nothing of the kind. I'm not kicking her out. I'm simply letting her go. Well, I thought I'd save you the trouble. I'm taking her with me. You? Yes. I love her and I'm going to marry her. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? Well, this is very amusing. You and the brat. What a wonderful combination. Lovely couple. Every prospect of happiness. Well, we'll take our chance on that. What are you going to live on? The ranch dad left me. It's mine and now I need it. The brat doesn't belong here, neither do I. From your point of view, we're both outsiders. Now give me the ranch and we'll leave together. I always thought it would be a mistake to give you that ranch. Now I'm convinced of it. Why? Well, you seem to forget that whatever else you may be, you're also a forester. You can't marry a nobody that I picked up in a night court. Besides, <laughs> this is very funny. You see, the brat happens to be in love with me. That's a lie, Max. But I'll believe it. No? Well, suppose we ask her. All right. After all, she's the logical one to settle it. I beg your pardon, Max. I'm very sorry to disturb you, but I think this young lady here has something she wishes to say to you. I'm sorry, Mr. Max, for what I've done today. You know, slapping that dame in the mush, but I couldn't help it. She got my goat. Oh, okay, wait a minute. What's the matter? Don't cry. Well, thanks. You seem to be rather free with your affection. What? I mean to say, uh, are you capable of loving more than one man at a time? You mean like Jane and Angela? No, I'm not like that. We'll leave uh, Jane and Angela out of it, if you don't mind. Your apologies, Captain. Oh. Thanks, Max. <laughs> well, don't do that. Why not? It's all right when we're alone, but not in front of company. Why, that's all right. Steve doesn't mind. After all, he is a member of the family. Uh, What's the matter with Steve? Steve! Steve! Hey, Steve, you big lad! What's the matter with you? Does it matter to you or anybody else where I go or what I do? I'm not important. I'm not a celebrity like Mac. Oh, but something's wrong. Steve, look at me. Are you mad at me? No. The only one I'm mad at is myself. Going out west? Yep. To the ranch? No, I haven't arranged to go to. Oh, yes, you, you have. Your father left it to you. Curly told me so. Oh, uh, my mother is selling the ranch to buy my wonderful brother a yacht so he can play boat. But how can she sell your ranch if it belongs to you? Well, I'll tell you. It seems that my mother is a trustee under my father's will. And I'm not of age yet. And she thinks it's a better investment. So I guess it is for Mac. Mac wouldn't stand for a thing like that. Oh, wouldn't he? It was his idea. I don't believe it. Okay.
<laughs> you know, I've always been interested in yachts. Yes, now, my yacht is going to be very unusual. Uh, upstairs. Upstairs? Yes, upstairs. Upstairs, yes. Yes, the dining salon, lounge, uh, plenty of floor, floor space. And uh, downstairs, the master's cabin. Shower, beautifully enclosed in glass. Uh, the laboratory uh, <coughs> on the uh, starboard, uh, for, um, other side of the boat, uh, with brass, porcelain, all plumbing appliances, very modern. Last word. Uh, the very last word. What are you going to name her? From Jane Hills, Angela. No, I'm going to call her the Brat. Quaint name for a yacht, don't you think? The Brat? What? Mm -hmm. How you ain't going to call it no Brat? No, why not? Why, I thought you'd be pleased. You ain't going to name your yacht no Brat, because there ain't going to be no yacht to name. Where? Where? Wait a minute, Mother. I'm interested. Go on. Why, I should think you'd all be ashamed of yourselves. And you, Mac, I can't believe it. Taking away that kid's ranch, when it's all he's got and all he wants, just to buy yourself a toy. Talking about water closets and saloons on your silly boat while he's in there with his heart breaking. You ain't going to do it, Mac. I ain't going to let you do it. Mac Millen, are you going to allow this? Yes, he is. I ain't going to let him steal from his own brother. Mrs. Foster, your son's going away. Do you know that? Oh, Steve's always going away and always coming back. Yeah, but this time he ain't coming back. And you stand here talking about yachts and plumbing. My God, if you was living down in my neighborhood, why, well, they wouldn't speak to you. They'd say, oh, them foresters. They don't give a hoot and yell about anyone except themselves. You'd be social outcasts. That's what you'd be. Oh, it's a good thing you don't live in the tenements. Or you'd be as lonely as if you had a small pub sign on your door. Where I come from, mothers care for their sons, even if they ain't famous. And so do brothers. People's got feelings. They're happy and they're unhappy. They laugh and they suffer. But you, you're just a lot of stuff, Jerry. Say, I don't think you're... Oh, you shut up and keep out of this. I want to tell you something, Max. This is a showdown for you and me. And if you don't do right by Steve, our engagement is busted. Like Millen. Did I understand her to say, indeed? Don't be alarmed, Mother. Uh, don't be alarmed. You heard what she said. It's uh, busted. Steve, where are you going? Away. Uh, we'll give you the ring, Steve. I'll make it and give it to you. I don't want any favors from my family. I'm on my own hook from now on. Oh, wait a minute, Steve. Ain't you going to kiss me? Why? She's going away. Ain't you going to kiss me goodbye? I don't know why I should. Well, you're the first man I ever asked to kiss me. I didn't know it. Can you beat me? Why, I'm just a plain nut. Come on, Miss. You better come in on me. Oh, you can't eat when you feel the way I feel. Why is it so popular? Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Nice morning. Is it? 
Well, you're in a fine humor this morning. Well, this morning is no time to be in a fine humor. Well, what do you think of your little uh, protege now? I think she's superb. Superb? Yes. And I think as far as I'm concerned, I've been most unfair. Unfair? Why, Mac, I think you've been marvelous to her. Quite the contrary. I brought her here. Not through altruism, generosity. Purely from a selfish motive. Why, I put her under a mental microscope. I even made love to her. For what? I'll bite. For what? Simply to get material for my new novel. That's why I say I've been most unfair. Well, if you're so conscious, Mr. Graham, why don't you marry the girl? Perhaps I will. Oh, I see. You're going to do right by our now. No, it isn't that. You know, I've been doing a lot of thinking since last night. And I wonder if our point of view, yours, mother's, mine, isn't just a little perverted. And I wonder if we're not what the brat called us. Phony. Stuff shirt. <laughs> I wonder. Why don't you and the brat join the Salvation Army? I don't like drums. Hey! Uh, will you pardon me? bribe to be? How'd you know that? How did I know what? That I'm going to get married. <clears throat> How did you know that I was going to propose to you? Are you going to propose to me? Well, I, uh... Oh, don't, don't, Mac. I got terrible bad news for you. I ain't going to marry you, because I don't love you. But you told me... I know, but... You see, that was just gratitude. Oh, I thought I'd loved you. But since then, I found out the real thing. Last night, when Steve kissed me goodbye, I knew I loved him. And the feeling I had for you was, well, just a phony baloney, that's all. You see, I really loved Steve. And I'm going to marry him. That is, if I can find him. But Steve has no profession, no money, nothing. He's got me, ain't he? Say, don't you worry, we'll get along all right. Yeah. Well, darling, you, uh, I feel sure that I can depend upon you not to mention to the bishop or to mother or, uh... <coughs> anybody, the fact that I... Proposed to you. Oh, no, ma'am. That's sacred. I felt sure that you'd feel that way. And, uh, what I'm trying to get at is I'm sure that I will be able to prevail upon Mother to turn over to you and Steve the ranch as a wedding present. Oh, thanks, Matt. You're a swell guy, do you know that? Yes. Yeah. What is the telephone, miss? Uh, uh, Who do you think it is? The bishop himself. He wants you to come to New York on 3.30 to meet the... Uh... Oh, Curly, you didn't. <laughs> Here, hold up, will you, Matt? <laughs> well, Miss Mac, young lady is live. Yes. I'll miss her very much. In fact, we'll all miss her. Yes. The cute little things she used to do and, and the cute things she used to say. Yes. And you, Mr. Mack, I can tell from the look in your eye that uh, <laughs> you'll be missing her more than any of us. Simpson. <laughs> To quote the young lady, in your hat. For richer, for poorer, until death do you pass? I do. And who is here to give this woman in her matrimony? 
I do, Your Reverend. Timothy Timpson. I do. I then pronounce you men and black. Oh, Your Reverend, can you imagine if my mother, God rest her soul, could see her daughter being married by a bishop? 